Hey guys, how's it going? We've got another Dota 2 Reddit League game, and it's Why So Serious against Not So User Friendly. And with me, not as always, is uh, Ainsley Harriet, the uh, the famous chef. And uh, I'm going to call him Luke because that's his real name, and Ainsley Harriet is a bit of a mouthful. But uh, this should hopefully be another entertaining game Maybe from the Dota 2 Reddit League. And we've got our first two bands out. It's the Invoker, banned out by Why So Serious and Not So User Friendly, have banned Timbersaw. Pretty standard <clears throat> first picks. Yeah, Invoker's pretty solid. I mean, he's got good control in team fights, and things like EMP can completely ruin a team's fight. Five seconds. So good, good start and ban. Uh, not much more to say from here at the moment, but not so user friendly at the moment. Our top of the the uh, EU the EU uh, games at the moment. So why so serious? In for a in for a bit of a tricky game, I imagine, but. I don't think uh, not so user friendly are going to hold back at all, and um, we've got ancient apparition banned out by not so user friendly, and <coughs> the uh, shadow fiend is banned out by what? Why so serious? Yeah, so that's two mids banned out for by why yeah. so serious. Yeah, it, it seems like they feel they know what mid already they want to go for, and they just don't want people against him. They all lose against. Yeah. I mean, Shadow Fiend is, you know, once he's actually got those uh, souls, is a bit of a pain to lane against and has a lot of presence in throughout the whole entire game. And um, maybe they're, they're not wanting any sort of horrible combos that uh, not so user friendly can put together. And we've got our first picks now. Um, why so serious? We'll get the first pick, and then not so user friendly. We'll manage to get a uh, we'll get a double pick, so they can maybe get a bit of a combo, possibly a Marana disruptor kind of thing. Not disruptor, uh, Shadow Demon. But I'm not really sure what you pick here. They're just going to play to their strengths, I would imagine. Yeah, there's probably in any of the really big standout bands so far. So we could have someone like a Bat Rider picked up. Bat Rider, in like one of these first picks, yeah. Even though uh, the two uh, two nerfs recently, what of uh, the Bat Rider, so his napalms, uh, no, it does half damage to non-hero units, I think. Uh, yeah, so it's going to slow down his jungling if he has to retreat there. And, uh, and also the lichen, his his howl, his uh, d the duration has gone down as well. But, yeah, I think they're much needed. Yeah, I haven't really seen, I haven't really seen the effect of it in the few pro games that I have watched recently. But I think in the long run, it does it does make a bit of a bit of a needed difference. So we've got Dark Seer picked up by YC Series. No, a bit strange to pick up your off lane first, but he is he's pretty solid. Ten so seconds to go. But you, he does set things up for a bit of a combo. So Five maybe not so user friendly seconds. in the banning stage. We'll maybe look towards those sort of bans. And Alchemist picked up first. This is I feel Dyer's it's pick. akin to a Marana pickup due to the fact that. He can be played as a support or a carry. Yeah, he could even be um, put more in the mid utility sort of role. That's true. And a Leshrac. I like this. I... Pick. He's he was buff recently, wasn't he? With his lightnings, cause a slow. It's yeah. really noticeable, and it really is annoying to play against. And it would definitely, f I think, it's a good change because normally you wouldn't. It's not usual to level into lightning early on, but it might actually be worth it now. But we'll see if that makes a difference in this game. Um, as why so serious? Be go. picking up their next hero. Probably they'll probably want to pick up a support now. Five seconds. Four seconds to do so, plus any bonus time that they have available. Reserve time. Yeah, it's quite nice to see a less track pick because it's not normally one that you usually see. Yeah, I think he's going to be picked up in the uh, quite a bit more in the TI. Therefore, um, yeah, I, I have, my, I myself haven't actually seen the slow on it, so I don't know how devastating it actually can be. It's a big but. slow, but for a short time. But um, yeah, so well, we'll see this game. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, Lightning Storm's got a, a really short cooldown, anyway. We've got the Sand King. They are look. I think they're looking towards this combo. We might get some uh, epic wombo combos with the uh, Darkseer vacuum into the ball and the Sand King ulti. 
And you could theoretically get a massive burrow strike as well. If time right, but getting these timings for Dark Seer is definitely takes Ten a lot of practice. To go. So we'll have to see how well they manage to perform. Five. <coughs> the only problem, the only problem I see, the only problem I see with like these combos is they can quite easily be countered with Dying just BKBs or true. a silence or something. So they burn out the Rubik for obvious reasons. Don't want him stealing any of these big ultis or stuns like that. Which is typical of a it's a typical ban when you're going for these big combos because Rubik comes along, steals one of your, you know, your Five Dark Seer wall or your the vacuum or whatever, and everything's just screwed up. Reserve time. And the disruptor, yeah, uh, this is a good ban. good ban out by not so user friendly because of this the potential for a combo having the dis disruptor can set up really nicely with the kinetic field. Yeah, I think they've definitely seen what White so Serious plan to Ten do in the game. Seconds to go. But there are still plenty of heroes for some Five awesome wombo combos. Seconds. And the Ember Spirit band out. This is, you know, it's a pretty standard band, and I think it's a good choice because on the in the right hands and with the right farm, he is devastating throughout the whole game. Due to the, uh, you know, sleight of fist when you've got a couple of battle furies, can really. <laughs> deal a lot of damage, especially to those squishy to supports, and he can just do, spam it from range as well, Five which makes him ever, even more deadly. Um, so I imagine not user friendly, probably ban out Reserve possibly time. a Magnus or an Enigma, or maybe yeah. more, more of a sort of setup carry, or the Marana. I guess the Marana Moonlight Shadow does make things possibly if no sentries or any detections about getting those combos off is a lot easier. I think I've harped on enough about combos, so we'll wait and see what they pick up. <laughs> it's just it's so fun to watch and I think throughout the whole of your drafting you're always like, Can I get these massive five man, you know, team wipes? Because it can <coughs> it can win you the game, it can swing Ten swing the game around. You're down you know down 10 kills or something and then you suddenly get Five you can seconds. be behind and still get these big combos off and it can bring you back into the game Reserve time. yeah they're quite interesting because it's not so much the items it's the timing and the precision of how well you can pull everything off tide yeah, so tide hunter picked up i know i'm pretty Maybe. sure i've seen not so user friendly run the tide hunter many many times very successfully in the in the off lane gets quite a bit of farm as well and then he's got his blink dagger and been jumped on <clears throat> yeah i like the tide as well because the ravage can stun uh the people of white serious uh if they're trying to come in for one of their combos yep Ten and just kind of lock them all down so if you're white serious what do you want to pick up now seconds Possibly another support hero or a mid. So I imagine this will be a dark seer in the off lane. Yeah. Um. I am Shadow, Shaman. Shadow Shaman. Okay. That I wouldn't have thought that would be because he's more of a pushing lineup, pushing pushing hero. But he is good all round and he can set up. You know, if they've got any maneuverable heroes around the place, this will stop them picking up something like a Weaver, which is can be a real pain. Later on in the game, once he's got the Lincoln Sphere and the Desolator, yeah, and like, they do need a bit of push in their lineup. And Chow Shaman definitely, you know, you can almost secure yourself a tower if uh, used correctly seconds. with those wards. Yeah, I've got to say, I didn't definitely didn't see the Chow Shaman pick. Um, yeah, so not so user friendly to choose a hero now. They need a carry. Oh, or a mid hero, probably. I imagine this will be a lesser axe. The alchemist can, he can, he's got a pretty much a solid stun. I know it's not like, you know, it's not like point and click, but with a little little bit of skill, it's not too hard to land. And then the lesser axe with his more unreliable stun can get the second stun off as well. So there, I can imagine it'd be a very powerful roaming combo. And the doom is picked up. This is a, uh, you know, <laughs> he counters every hero. <laughs> He does. And can be played in a lot of different positions as well. So they could run in mid if they need to. And they, so they're going to wait and see what Wise Series picked up 
and maybe they'll stick their doom mid or <coughs> in the farming position. Yeah, I like I like having the alchemist and the doom because of how um, lenient they can be with where they can play. Yeah. The, like the whole lineup Ten is completely to go. open at the moment because Leshrac can also be played as a core. Five seconds. Yeah, it's, it's probably got Wise Serious thinking quite hard about where to everyone's going to be laning. The Viper. Um, I think the Viper is actually a smart pickup because he's he can, he's really strong against melee heroes. And they've currently got three melee heroes: the Doom, Tidehunter, and the Alchemist. Yeah, I think especially if they think the Doom Ten is possibly going to be mid, because. Doom, I think, starts off with zero armor. Yeah. The the Viper is just so strong against him. Yeah. So maybe a possibly <coughs> an aggro trialing. Yeah. Possible, yeah. It is possible with the uh, Sanking Shadow Shaman and possibly whoever they pick up now. So I I imagine also user friendly will pick up. I want to say they're going to pick up a mid now. Because they banned out, they banned out the Luna, which is who they might have wanted to pick up. They ran him very successfully in the game I saw last week. The Brewmaster is also banned. I think this is partially a respect ban Ten because <coughs> to Top has—I've uh, seen his Brewmaster uh, two weeks ago, and Five it was seconds. really good. Yeah, Brewmaster's old when used correctly is really powerful. Especially once you get an Agonims up on him. I feel like not so user friendly. They need another uh, ranged hero. Yeah, they. I don't think they can be going into this with four melees. Um. So I guess that leaves to pick up a Drow. Drow would always be entertaining. That's what I'm hoping for. I want them to pick Drow. The last time I said this, they actually picked the hero Five I said. Seconds. So please be a Drow. I'd love to see oh. Sniper. Uh, it's a Zeus. Zeus, Zeus is Radiance good though. Pick. He's fine. So that, I, I imagine that's going to be a Zeus mid. Yeah. It might. Yeah, I presume they'll have the Doom farming and the Alk Leshrac supporting. Yeah, it's still so open though because Zeus is a fairly okay support. Yeah, they could easily have an Alk mid, Ten Zeus supporting. <laughs> and I mean, look, at, look how squishy. Doom. Look how squishy uh, Wise Osiris' heroes seconds. are. I mean, Viper does tank up later on, but if you get a good, uh, you know, get a, I say good Five Thunder God's seconds. Wrath, you know, a well timed Thunder God's Faceless Wrath, void. and Faceless is picked up. It's going to be a farming role, Faceless Void. And uh, things are looking interesting. Right, I'm going to leave you to take over two minutes, so I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Um. Void's interesting because obviously he can control the fights a lot. I'd um, get ready if I were you. With his Chronosphere, he can just lock down the Doom before he can get it off, and they can try and focus him down. And that also links up with the vacuum inside the Chrono preparing for the Epi. So I think it works quite well with their combo lineup. Um, pause is quite handy. Um, I haven't seen either of these teams play that much, so I'm not sure who's going to be playing what role, but it looks like the Alk and the Leshrac are definitely supporting with their item builds. Um, I'm not quite sure where they're all... Are oh, they looking to possibly go meet them in the jungle. Right, I'm back. Hello. Great. I thought there was someone at the door. Um, yeah, have we introduced the teams? Uh, not yet, no. Time for okay. To die. Um, let's do that after we've possibly seen some uh, action here. Um, we can see a nice ward placed by the Tunnel. I think they saw that though. Well, they're pinging it out anyway. Yeah, they, they've, they've definitely noticed that. This is something I always notice that NSUF do uh, rather well is the the warding, that the aggressive awards they do, which gives the Tide Hunter a lot of space, or at least a lot of um, security. 
Battle begins. Although, the thing is, they've noticed the wards, but none of them have the money for any sentries. So, they can't do anything about it. So, these supports are going to be losing out early on. There's a smoke up here by uh, Leshrak and the Alchemist. Leshrak picked up this uh, haste rune. They're going to try and make something happen here. The Alchemist has decided to level up his uh, unstable concoction, which is not need much needed, and the split earth by the uh, Leshrak. And here comes a stun. It's going to be a one and a half oh, seconds stun. This Shadow Shaman is gone. There's a hex on to the Leshrak, but it's going to help out. First blood, nicely done there. Onto the Alchemist, which will uh, actually almost secure his boots. And whether they're going to try anything else here, or they're going to rotate around back mid. Because with this haste rune on the less rack, he's uh he's still got he's still got full mana as well. It's just worn off though, but I think they're gonna maybe scale off this viper. Um so while we've got a little bit of uh you know, got that first blood action, shall we introduce the uh the heroes? Uh actually I don't want to yet. It's Alchemist looking nice and aggressive. Uh the Dieta on uh Vipers having to sit back here for the moment. Um, yeah, so Alchemist happy to just wait it out for the moment, but here comes the Shadow Shaman. <laughs> Shadow Shaman's him. him out. Yeah, and they're going to trade, I think they're going to trade. The Viper might choose to right-click the Alchemist, but with the, uh, with Toon Tamer, Toon Tamer on the, uh, Lesher it's going to, you know, keep the, everyone nice and safe. And looking like the supports of the Radiant, the Dire side. No, they're going to go top. No. They really want, oh no, just placing a nice aggressive ward here. If they wait, I think they're going to smoke up and try and go on the darks here now. That would be a smart. I don't even. They don't even just smoke. I mean, the, the there's radio. no wards up, so the darks is not going to see him yeah, coming. The only ward is he's sitting too far forward, and yeah, he's going to pay the price here. And the alchemist charging up his uh, concoction. They're going to lose vision on him though. He's used the uh, nice duke oh. around the trees and uh, into the darkness. It means the darks is going to get away without any issues. Um, slight mistake. Well, actually, I'd say it was more well played by uh, the Darks here. There, actually, managed to use the uh, fog of the trees to stop the concoction going off, meaning the Leshrac couldn't hit, get his. Uh, it's only a level one stun at the moment. Iron Shell's going to uh, try and keep the supports back here, but they're not too worried about it at the moment. They just want to keep him out of XP range. Viper getting a DD room, but no bottle, unfortunately. Right, now we could talk about the uh, heroes um, and who is playing them. And due to the good cooking fashion of Ainsley Harriet on the was it the green pepper side on uh, Shadow Shaman, we have Sandrian who is playing support with SBX320 on the Sand King, who are looking after the Faceless Void played by Da Vinci. And in the mid lane on the Viper with the DD rune at the moment is the Dieter. And finally on the off lane as Darkseer is Edos. And on the uh, red tomato side, if you'd like to introduce him. Uh, we have Seburn on the Doom playing the carry role. There is Toon Tamer playing Leshrac, supporting him. We have Zed Golem on the Alchemist, who is another support. Top is the mid Zeus. And we have the offlane Tide played by WKS. Cool. So, uh, how do you fancy this Zeus up against the Viper? Um, I think it's quite interesting. Early on, I think the Zeus has a favourable matchup because of just the sheer damage output he has. But, as you can see, the Viper looks like he's going for a quick mech with the headdress kick up. So once he's got that, he's going to seriously tank up a bit. And I think that's when Zeus is going to have to go around start trying to find ways of getting kills in other places. Yeah, he does take quite a lot of damage when he spans out this arc lightning due to uh, there's currently two levels in corrosive skin actually, so probably doing as much damage as he takes. He's gonna find it in his rune here, fill up his bottle, which unfortunately I think the bottle is just no, it's not even a bottle, is it? It was a fast uh, it was a fast headdress with boots coming out of the theatre. And I think yeah. Dark Darkseer is gonna have to be careful here. He doesn't have any mana f oh he's just got mana mana for Surge. He's going to use it now, possibly. Oh no, the uh, stun going out from the Alchemist, but fortunately Darkseer getting back quick enough, so so still only 0-1 on the board. Uh, if we have, uh, unless we have a look up the last hits, unfortunately didn't have that up. It's 21-20, so mid is actually very even at the moment for last hits. I feel Zeus is keep doing a good job of keeping the Viper back, but he's kind of running lower mana. He might try and do something with the bottle. Um, Faces Void also farming nicely, uh, getting more farm than the Doom at the moment. 
maybe uh, due to a bit more space given. It's always a bit harder to uh, lane against the Dark Seer than it would be to lane up against the uh, Tidehunter at the moment. Tidehunter, he's uh, level 5 up against the probably level f uh, level 4 Dark Seer, who's just hit level 5 actually. So a little under, under level compared to the Tidehunter as Tidehunter has been happily you know, staying in XP range. Shadow Shaman and uh, Sand King possibly looking to do something once this lane is pushed out a bit more. And there's some pingers to go on this Dark Seer again. He does use Surge and he's going to use it now. Concoction being popped. He's going to have to use it now. No. Uh, Guess he's quite good he, to range. I don't think he should have cast Concoction there. He saw the Surge was up. Uh, I think he should have. I don't think there was much chance of him getting. Yeah, but if we look mid, if we look mid now, we've got the Sand King and uh, Shadow Shaman smoked up. There is a Shackle available and a uh, new level one Barrow Strike at the moment. But Zeus is very squishy. He is six now, so he has Sunder God's Wrath. If he decides to use it, he might get some vision. But they're going to go on him now, and I think this will probably be. I oh, know he's going to run away up uh, into oh, his jungle, which will actually probably save him for now. Actually, no, he's going to look for the Illusion Rune. So uh, not quite quick enough, and the smoke's up by Leshrac and the Alchemist. So this could be a three on three at the moment, but the smoke is revealed by the um, Shadow Shaman. It's one of the problems of Leshrac is uh, landing a split earth is very tricky, especially at the early levels. But the Alchemist using his concoction, he's going to go on the Viper here. Ulti used by the Viper onto the Leshrac, but it's not going to be enough. The double stun coming onto the Viper, and that's the death of him. The uh, Alchemist getting the last hit, so he's actually got the two kills at the moment. It's always good to have uh, extra gold on on your supports when you can. And Midas picked up by Doom. So he's going to walk over to the jungle. He currently hasn't devoured any creeps. Which I think he's going to probably go and do now. But all he'll find is a ghost and a harpy. Well, I think he's just been devouring them in lane just so he can stay there, get the XP, and just get gold as fast as yeah. possible. I feel like he probably should pick up a uh, at least a jungle creep because it's, it's a free basically. But yeah, actually, I, saying that, devour, <laughs> devouring the creeps which have iron shell on them is definitely helpful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, luckily he's not really being contested or anything at all, but there are some useful creeps, um, like the Sator, Tormentor, and stuff, which give bonuses for helping lane, like health regen or armor. I think the Sator is one of the one of the best heroes, uh, heroes um, creeps you can get early on. See, it's like, was it three health regen per second or something? It's a lot of Thunder God's oh. Wrath being used. And oh. just, uh, we missed that uh, Void kill, the Leshrac and the Tidehunter. Tidehunter did use his Ravage, and Leshrac used his stun as well, as well as Edict. But it's well worth a kill onto the Void, who had been getting uh, free farm up until now. Yeah, I just noticed, I thought the Void was going for a Midas, but that kill may have just sent him over to the fact that he's bought Power Treads instead. Yeah. Which is it's a big deal, especially now that the Doom has it and the Face of the Void does not. And with Doom, with Devour, and the uh, Hand of Midas can easily keep up with the Void in terms of farm. A uh, thousand gold now on Zeus. He's got his arcane boots. I don't play Zeus very much. Maybe you'd know, suggest more what you might go for. But there you go, you saw the start oh, of the. the that's uh, slow. That's slow, yeah. It's only level 1 at the moment as well, he's going to use it again, possibly. No, he's going to use the Split Earth. Missing, unfortunately, Leshrac taking a lot of damage. What with the uh, Viper ulti going to be used? And a slight mistake coming from the Leshrac, meaning he is dead. It's now 1-3. And nearly 9 minutes into the game. Oh, but avoid using his Chrono onto the Titan Hunter. Is this going to be enough with the Shadow Shaman, with his Chicken, and possibly the Shackles will be, will be enough for the Face of Void to finish him off. So that was nicely done. Now. Here comes the Alchemist, though. Uh, Shadow Shaman. He took a concoction, but it wasn't. It was only like two, three second charge. So he's a bit low. He actually has a Sal, so he's going to be right up to health. So a good Chrono killing off the Tide Hunter. Um, as we look around, looks like Alchemist and Leshrac. There's it. There is a smoke available. Are they going to? They going to try and do anything here? Uh, we got some. I'm liking the fact they're keeping up these aggressive wards and they're dewarding where possible. Leshrac. I think they've spotted each other out, and the Shadow Shaman. No, that was a bad smoke, unfortunately, because the le Leshrac was revealed by Shadow Shaman. The concoction being channeled, he's going to use it onto this uh, Shadow Shaman. It comes out with the uh, Split Earth, and this will probably be the death of him. But it's going to be the uh, Faces Void. Can just uh, time walk out of there without too many issues, but it is another kill. And with this Sentry Ward, they can deward this pretty much newly placed Observer Ward by the Radiant. 
I think it's quite interesting that this alchemist has got two levels in Grievel's Greed, seeing as he yeah, seems to be going more of a support, so I wouldn't have thought. Assassin probably would be better. He's only got three last hits at the moment. But I suppose not that high on mana early on, cause being a strength hero. Yeah, you're right. Maybe they're looking to transition him at some point, maybe he'll go sit in the jungle at some point fairly soon. Or at least he can secure, you know, if you've got four cores or whatever, you can guarantee yourself a win late, late game. Um, things fairly even, like towers haven't really been pushed at all at this point. Pretty much all towers sitting on near full health. Less route come down bot. Looks oh, like this might be looking to go on the Shadow Shaman. The Dark Sit was a bit of a sh bit of trouble there as well, but he managed to surge away. It is 2v3 at the moment, so they're going to have to be in trouble here. The uh, Chrono used onto two. He's going to try and hit down this Tidehunter. The Tidehunter has 1k health, so they're just going to run away from this. A two man burrow strike, and nothing else at the moment. But the Viper comes in, uses his ult on the Sand King. The Tidehunter Ravage was used as well, which is really good. But they're going to bring him down without too many issues. But I think this is going to be the end of the game engagement. Leshrac running away, he's going to be into trouble with the slow from the Viper. But there's no, uh, there's a level 3 Barrow Strike, but it's not going to be enough. And Toon Tamer will get away. Relatively, well, not unscathed, but with his life. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Um, so yeah. Although uh, some big ultis were used, the Chrono and the and the Tidehunter Ravage, I think it was well worth it to get that kill on the Tidehunter. No, wait. Tidehunter used it defensively, so that's even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it was nice for them having the mech up. It's allowed them to keep their health up, and now they're pushing the tower down, and it looks like they're probably going to actually take it now. I think they will. This is uh, well played from uh, WSS. Fortification coming out. They're going to try and defend this at the moment, but there's still four of them. There's 3v4 at the moment, and they're going to take the tower. The Alchemist channeling. There's not only one, he's going to back off, take some damage, take a concoction to the face. But he's okay. But yeah, like I said, Viper with that mech now. And he looks like he's going for a hood as well. Possibly transition that into a pipe. Oh, it looks like uh, Zeus is possibly going straight up Aghanims. He's got an Ogre Club on the Courier. Yeah, I, I think that's a smart idea, to be honest. Well. The Ogre Club, I think, is a good idea because you need that extra. Well, it'll give you an extra what hundred health. Oh, I didn't notice it. He went and bought oh, points. And he got points as well. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be an Agnims. Well, it's already good because now he's now up to three hundred hit points. This is four hundred more than he was on before. Meaning he can. That's a lot of stay in the Shadow Shaman. Is going to be in a lot of trouble here. Zeus is going to throw out his uh, lightning bolt. He's going to commit the ulti though. Yes, he is. He needed to because the Shadow Shaman fairly speedy. Not so fast. Doom needs to watch out on top. The iron shell's almost got him. He does have his heals though. He's actually in a lot of trouble. The vacuum being used. Dark City is going to put on another iron shell, but his surges ran out. So Doom's going to get away with the help of Scorched Earth. He's also got that uh, bonus three armor, which he really needs. But he's going to stick around for a little bit longer. Some pings going out onto this uh, Tidehunter and Leshrac who are roaming around. Leshrac still hasn't quite got level six yet, but. To be honest, you don't level in Charlotte at level 6, so not too big a deal. Zeus hunting out this Viper, but he's going to have to get back. He's, that corrosive skin, man, is so slow. Yeah, I think it's very wise of him to uh, max this out first going against the Zeus, because the Arc Lightning is almost always going to hit him. Yeah, and, and Top is going to have to be careful here, because there are two supports kind of waiting in the sidelines at the moment, but they're, they're too far back at the moment. I don't think Zeus is going to push any further forward. This is uh, a bit silly. Oh, Blink Dagger up on the Sand King, which is oh, nice and that early. That is big, that is big. I think he, um, he must be in the uh, jungle. And that's where Faces Void has gone at the moment. He's got his uh, Mask of Manus. Uh, I think probably one of the better items to get on Faces Void. Uh, meaning you can deal a lot more damage in the Chronosphere. Seeing as he's hopefully not going to get too much harassment out from outside the Chrono, hey, I think he's pretty safe to do that. Looks like the Radiant. Pushing, uh, grouping up mid. They're going to try and take their second tower of the game. Top going to have to be very careful. Yeah, it looks like Doom is possibly going for a uh, fast assault curious. Um With the play mail and chain mail. Yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be uh, one of those things. 
I think uh, Zeus, tr with his illusion, trying to bait out Lions some uh, spells, but that's going to be it for now. And, and then, there's a TP in, I can't remember who's for the Chrono being used onto that Doom. That was a really he's a big TP. He's in a bit of trouble here, but Doom and the Sand King ulti being used along with the Shackles of Scurry. It comes to ravage on all of the team. Zeus ulti being used. They're all really low to stun onto the Dark Sea without too much problem. And I think the uh, Serpent Wards have trapped him, uh, the um, Shadow Shaman in. He's done himself, but he actually managed to TP mm. away without too many issues. So that's uh, two for one at the moment. The uh, Void managed to get away with that time warp. So uh, some big ultimates used. Uh, two for one. Um, probably an NSUF's favour there at the moment. But like, like I said, everyone used uh, Ravage was used, Zeus's ult was used, Chrono was used, Sand King's ulti was used. It was a, it was a. Yeah, it was a very aggressive TP from Doom, and he paid for it with his life. But they did throw everything on him, meaning they could defend this tower. Yeah, I got, somehow I think they definitely managed to come out on top. And I think one of the key things as well was the Serpent Wards were dropped at the top of the stairs, rather than possibly where they wanted them, which is by the tower, because yeah. it was just where he was. So the tower has managed to remain alive, and with the wards I think it would have gone down. Yeah. Yeah, with that, when that Zeus, what was he? He's now level... He's now level 11 as well, and I, I, I think I imagine that was a, a level 11 Thunder God's Wrath, dealing 540 damage. It's no small amount, especially to. Uh, well, if you have a look on their team, they're all around the un, around and under 1k health. So that's half your health gone already. Yeah, I think this is definitely a smart idea for them to get an agony yeah. straight up. Yeah. They saw the weakness in the lineup with the squishiness of the heroes they chose, and they were exploiting it, which is nice done. Last track, he's going to try and push his tower with his Diabolic Edict and his Split Earth. And uh, Alchemist in his ulti form, they're going to try and uh, get some right clicks, his Doom as well. Are they going to. Are they Radiant? Going to try and defend this. Yes, they are. Blink on the stun onto the Alchemist, he's very low. And a Chrono onto three, really nicely done. He's deciding to go on the Leshrac, pops his Mask of Madness. He's got to get a couple more bashes though. I think this will be the Doom used onto the Dark Sis. There's no wall for the uh, stun cancelling the Doom TP away. That's actually a three for nothing trade. Seven all now, and uh, NSUF looking on the back foot. Yeah, Tide does now have his blink though, so he can initiate with Ravage rather than having to use it defensively as oh, he has true. been doing. I think they're going to have to concede this tower. Yeah, with just two of them up there, I don't think they I don't think they'll even be able to get in there for the deny. Plus the <laughs> with the blink, being used. With the blink dagger on the Sand King, you can't step up to that tower with the entire team there. No. Um, yeah, that was a lovely chrono catching three heroes. So the Agonim's now finished for Zeus, so they're gonna have to watch out. They're stealing at the moment. Oh, I was wrong earlier. It was only 350 damage, but with the scepter, it's now 540. I mean, 350 nuke to everyone still isn't bad. Yeah, it definitely helps turn the tide in a fight. Yeah. Radiance Middle Tower is Maybe being a little aggressive, but uh, I think the rest of him are going to join up, join up mid, and uh, why so serious? Going to look and take this last tier one tower, I think. Uh, looking over at the net worth, Doom is on top, which means I'll take the blink stun and sandstorm onto the strike, taking him down to two-thirds of his health. They've been chased by the Viper, but some TP support coming in. Surge being used by the Dark Seer, but that's it. Alchemist going into ulti form. That was a nice vacuum to try and uh, keep everyone back. Here comes the nukes from the Zeus. He's got a DD rune as well. Uh, Chrono is off cooldown now, so you have to be careful, but there is the Ravage. Blink Ravage, like you said. And here comes the Tidehunter. So it's going to be one of these uh, stalemate mid engagements at the moment. No one wants to initiate too quickly. We got some uh, yeah. arcane boots up on the, su the supports now, both on the Sand King and the Shadow Shaman for the Dark Radiant. And Zeus has some, and I think Leshrac has got some on for the Radiant as well. Leshrac's going to have to go back. He was really low. I'm not sure what to. Maybe just the Creep Wave. And here comes the Siege on the mid tower. The wards dropped again, and securing another tower. Nice. Uh, in the meantime, Doom looks like he's going to be taking top tower. I think they're. I think very oh, no. smartly. Oh, the TP have come in. I saw one being cancelled though. That was a bit strange. That's because the uh, Chrono was used onto the Alchemist, now being uh, shackled up, and that's going to be his death. Like Zeus dealing a lot of damage to this face. I think he managed to backtrack there. 
that last uh, uh, thunderbolt, lightning bolt. Judging by that reaction, it looks like he did. Yeah, <laughs> that would have easily been his death because he had Mask of Madness popped as you. Well, and man, his face is fully getting lucky. He managed to find a re uh, regeneration rune, and he is also going for an Agonims. Don't normally see this get picked up in Void, but... I think it's getting more and more common, because you can fight a lot earlier. Yeah. The old school Void was, you'd sit around 30 minutes in the jungle, under a lot, in a lot of trouble. Doom being used onto uh, Dark Seed at the moment, uh, on the top lane. He's going to go down just to right click, send the Doom and the Scorched Earth, and finally a level death to finish him off. So, something going their way. They can look at Shadow Shot. There's the Blink Ravaged, and uh, they just get melted by the. Uh, that was a lovely Sand King using his Blink to stun, and now using his Epicenter. He's gonna kill off this Zeus, I think, but he's gonna get stunned up. Double stunned by the uh, Alchemist and the Leshrac. But Tidehunter also gonna go down to the right clicks of the Viper. And here comes the Faces Void, hitting very hard with his Mask of Madness. Uh, but uh, two for three trade in uh, NSUF's favor. Uh, that was interesting. Kind of just came out of nowhere after the <laughs> yeah. Doom managing to pick off the. Actually, no, it was a two for two trade because the Doom got the Dark Seer on the top lane. But overall, a two for three, I guess. And that is the Agonyms finished for the Faces Void. So that means his chrono now lasts five seconds and has a 60 second cooldown. 60 second cooldown is quite powerful. It's very low. You, that's, that's pretty much. You're going to have it for a team fight. Where if you look at Doom has a what's it got? Hundred second cooldown, Ravage just like two minutes, isn't it? Over two minutes, two and a half minutes. So yeah, I feel like WSS they can fight more, and they are winning these team fights at the moment. That that Ravage was really good though. Definitely oh, saved good. a lot of collateral damage. Um, Zeus has been spotted out here, I think, but he's not in any danger. So we got some calm after that uh, that fight. Alchemist, he's going to be picking up the mech. He's pretty much finished it now. Just got to finish off this ghost. Uh, Darks here is going for a. Well, he's probably going to build that into a hood, which will negate most of the damage from at least one of the alts from either the Tide Hunter or the Zeus. Because Ravage does do quite a lot of damage. It's no, uh, nothing to be sniffed at, but Toon Tamer on the left strike did manage to bring down their second tower, actually, so that's a nice injection of gold for the supports. I didn't notice this get picked up, but the Viper's finish is BKB, so... Oh, wow. When, if he notices when the tide or someone jumps in, he can pop that immediately, and he can stay there fighting while... The rest of this team are stunned. Yeah, so the Radiant looking, I think the Serpent Wars are going to be committed here. And I think uh, NSUF are just happy to take the trade of a uh, tier 1 for tier 2, but they need the towers. That was a blink dagger, ah, uh, yeah, defensive blink dagger used by Tidehunter. And they are taking these towers down very quickly, and they are not showing any signs of st any signs of stopping. So uh, NSUF are going to have to back off here and defend this tier 3, and let's see what their racks take. Tower but yeah, if you imagine a uh, a Blink Ravage with a Zeus Ult, it's going to be a lot of health gone from the majority of these Dyer's heroes from WSS. And I think, here we go, we've got a Blink Ravage on to four of them and the Zeus Ult, taking down a lot of them and the BKB used, being bar used by the Viper of the Darkseer wall being thrown out. Doom onto the Faces Void, so we can't get his Chrono off, that's a really, really important Doom. And uh, Viper's tanking up, he's going to try and kill off this Leshrac, but... He might, he'll might. probably go down to the poison. No, he's probably going to be okay, actually. That was a really good fight by NSUF. The Doom managing to get in real quickly and dooming the Faces Void before he could do any damage. And there was that Ravage uh, Thunder God's Wrath combo that we were talking about. Yeah, I think that was very smart by Doom. Especially with the fact that Void, after his first real main item after Mom, because it's been his Agonims, He's trying to focus on the Chronosphere, and if you just doom him, then it completely shuts what he's going for down. Yeah. And is almost practically useless in fights. Yeah, and with the Ravage, it means that Doom has plenty of time to get in there and use that use that Doom. I'd almost like to see a BKB picked up by the Faceless Void. Admittedly, it won't stop Doom, but it will stop the Ravage damage. 
and the stun. Meaning that he can then get his Chronosphere off and block any Thunder God's Wrath. But you feel like maybe he needs some attack speed or damage item there as well. Yeah, unfortunately, if he does go BKB, it's going to limit how much damage he can actually do. Faces Void, popping the Mask of Man, it's going straight on to the Toon Tamer, but he's going to get back real quickly. Alchemist, uh, walking into the Chronosphere, but it was enough to deter. Oh, Zeus using his Ghost Scepter, but he goes down. Here comes the Faces Void, trying to finish off what he started before, but Shadow Shaman gets there before him. Zeus buying back straight away, they need him for the defense. So that was, uh, they took two down there, that was a good Chrono, one to two. They were, uh, I think the NSUF were a little uh, bit cocky to walk up onto that high ground. Um, or at least they needed they needed some more vision there. <coughs> so if we have a look over at the XP graph, 3k advantage in NSUF, I would have not said that. I would not have expected that at all. And no. The gold is also in the way of NSUF, but they do have this doom. With the Midas and uh, Devour. And they're going to find the Faceless Void again. He's getting automatic, gets stunned up. And there comes the uh, Bow Strike. But he's really tanky. He's got three and a half health. Uh, a lot of health. Uh, the Sand King going to try and finish off this Doom. Yeah. That was a three man stun by the Death Strike. Uh, along with the. Uh, and the Ravage also being used. Only catches one, though, unfortunately. The Dark Seer popping the, the vacuum. The Sand King's still alive. This. Uh, this. Uh, what is it? The magic resistance really being important. The Faces Void is still alive, and so is the Viper. They need another Zeus Thunder God's Wrath. They're look, at, look how low they are, they're all below half health. And here comes another Chrono catching two. And the Mask of Madness, he really wants this Lesh Rack. He's going to kill the Lesh Rack, but unfortunately, actually, the Sand King gets the kill. I say unfortunately. Looks like they're going to get the Alk as well, possibly. Yeah, the Vacuum and the Slow coming out from the Time Walk is going to be enough. So, if they didn't reinitiate, that was an okay fight for NSUF, but now five of them are down. Radiant and this tier, this tier 2 mid is going to go down as well. The thing I was trying to say earlier is it was the pipe. I forgot what I was talking about, or the name of it. But the pipe, really. The pipe from the Dark Seer. That's what kept them all alive. If they didn't have the pipe, they would all be dead. Yeah, the pipe is a really good counter to the Zeus, because the amount of magic damage block it can do is really handy. <coughs> Basis now sitting on two and a half k gold. Uh, I'm not really sure what he's going to get now. Probably some, probably a Mjolnir. Possibly. I gotta say, I really like this Aghanim so far. The fact that in that fight he managed to have two Chronos. Yeah, that was ridiculous. I was like, and the Chrono being used, and it's been used again. <laughs> The Leshrac is wor working towards because he's got a uh, Ogre Club and a Staff of Wizardry. Quite off for way off his going for the Aghanims. is a very good Aghanims upgrade. Okay, the uh, Z Golem here. Alchemist, he's warding, but he's going to have to be careful. Possibly a Blink Burrow Strike. Epicenter is now off cooldown as well, and I imagine Faces Void's Ulti is also off cooldown as well. They can just keep fighting and fighting without um, having to worry about their Ultis. But NSUF, yeah. they are aware of this and they're going to defend their last uh, tier 2 tower. Looks like WSS to just... They've got, the, they've got the wards up so they can easily just drop them down. Yeah. And there is actually no fortify for uh, NSUF. Uh, so if they did go on the tower, I think they would definitely lose it. Just commit, uh, commit some wards. Unfortunately they're only level 1 wards at the moment, but... All the same, not too bad. The acid spray being used here comes the Chrono on to two, but he can't decide uh, to go on here. He got, he's getting the Alchemist, he is hitting hard now with that That was Lance very nice. Down. The Zeus managed to pop his Ghost Scepter yeah. straight before. The, dude, the Ravage being used. Doom, Doom was, uh, was used, but uh, Shadow Shaman, he is in a lot of trouble here, but Leshrac taking a lot of damage from these wards. He's got to be really careful. The Shadow Shaman is still alive, and Tidehunter managed getting a triple kill. His Ravage definitely saved the day, and he's going for a, a refresher at the moment. He's popping his salve, uh, Dark Seer. This is going to be an interesting battle. Vacuum being used, and with the Ion Shard, I think Tidehunter will go. No! Tidehunter will survive. Shadow Shaman, he can't do it! He can't oh, do it! Oh my god! Tidehunter on 10 hit points, but the wards. He's got a. Oh. The wards, even though they weren't quite being. Uh, top tower is being uh, microed there. So oh, 5 for 4 trade. I think that was a 5 for 5 trade. The Alchemist uh, man, just because uh, he went down in the Chrono. And the tower's gone down anyway. 
Jesus Christ, a five for five fight. Don't see one of those every day. No, I, yeah, I, as I was saying, I really like the Zeus. He managed to pull off his Ghost Scepter just before Chrono went down, so the Void just didn't know what to do because he couldn't hit him. <laughs> it's always like that. You're like, why, why isn't this working? Oh shit, go on the next target. But it was it was enough to kill the Alchemist, but he was still in a bit of a bad position when the uh, Chrono went down. No, that Ghost Scepter allowed him to uh, drop Thunder Gods down, which I think is very key. Was... Epicenter didn't, didn't get used. It got killed too quickly. I think I think uh, this less track has been landing some pretty good split earths as well. Definitely making a big difference. And we do have a veil of discord Beast. being used, uh, picked up on the sand king. So his old was it sand king? It yeah, was. Sand he just hasn't got it yet. It's on the yeah, on the courier. Stacking of some camps here, get some that level 16 on the on the Doom. But this uh, faces Void, yeah, he's gone for the Maelstrom, probably into the mill now. Well, so I think I'd like to see a Veil picked up on possibly the Zeus, because with the, especially with something like a their Leshrac going Agonims, a Veil drop down on them, it's gonna. Do so yeah, much damage. It's, it's gonna do. Maybe they're leaving the less rack to get it once he's finished his uh, agonims, but he's a little way off that, so yeah, I think you're right. There's almost a refreshes on the tide. He's got his Oblivion Staff and Perseverance and 1k gold in the bank. So yeah. So is that just the recipe he needs now? It's just the recipe, yeah. Which yeah. is 1350, so that's gonna be really instrumental as well. As long as he doesn't get targeted by the Faces Void or Hexed or Shackled or something like this. So there is a lot of disables at the moment. For WWS, <coughs> WSS even. Thunder God's Wrath well, being used. I think that was more of the scouting Thunder God's Wrath, just to check whether they've gone into Roche or not. But now, now they know that they can farm a bit more. This Alchemist, is he? What's he going for? Yeah, he's going. He's going for a uh, pipe as well. Um, got some quite defensive wards at the moment being placed. Is there going to be a fight mid here though at the moment? Dark Seer maybe a little bit far forward. But uh, this, yeah, I think they're all... They're going to back off now. Maybe try and get a bit more farm. But yeah. Viper has also been pretty instrumental in these fights as well. Because he's got his mech speaker in this... <laughs> Toon Tamer. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, you're in some trouble here. Getting stunned up. Mask of Man is being used. I think he wanted to get some aggressive wards. Managed to get the split earth down, but it's not going to save his life. Yeah, he was trying to get some aggressive wards down, I would imagine. Yeah, he's got a ward in his stash. But, I think he did manage to buy the Blade of Alacrity, so all he needs now is the Wind Boost. They know they're pinging out, for the, they're pinging out for the, uh, at the Roche. Is that tied with a... Tied only 400 off his Refresher. I think they're just going to give them Roche at the moment. They have a feeling, but they're not entirely sure at the moment. But the yeah, Zeus is, oh, he's in trouble now. Here comes the, the uh, Chronosphere. Zeus is going to die most definitely. He's not popping his Magical Madness because it was already used. <laughs> that is so long. That lasts forever. Here comes the Magical Madness being used and the Alchemist down and out. That's two down. It'll probably be fine. But yeah, Zeus is not now, taken. And now, the tower taken by Doom. Tower has fallen. Yeah, I think it's just smart from Doom. It's, it can't do anything to help. He might as well split push, see if he can stop them from... Going after Roche. Wars committed here, but <laughs> Leshrac being double stunned up here by the Bashes and the uh, Burrow Strike. And this uh, tier 3 tower is going to go down a lot quicker than uh, Doom can take it down. Take the enemies down, but here comes the fortification. And this is going to be a Raxing, I think. Three down for NSUF, and Doom's doing all he can. <coughs> there is the refresher up on Tide now, though, so when people are alive, they can fight this. Definitely. And Dux is going to TP back, um, and so does the Shadow Shaman. Being sh Doom being shackled up at the moment, but they can't do anything at the moment. Doom being used on the sh Shadow Shaman. Probably. Chrono the best up again. Of... Alchemist is going down. <laughs> the Shadow Shaman getting killed by the. Uh, by the Thelon Squad's Wrath. Doom is getting out of this. He is getting out of this until he gets killed by the. Uh, Ion, Ion Shell. So was the Viper. Viper died, killed. Yeah, 
Yeah, they managed to drop another Chrono on top of the Alchemist, but then they went on top of the Viper and managed to get him. Okay. So I think an Alk for Viper is uh, definitely a good trade that NSUF are happy to take. And so faces Void. Now I've got an Ogre Club. I imagine a BKB. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I probably. I can't really see well unless he wants to go for something like a Sanjinyasha, maybe. But no, I'm. I presume it's going to be a BKB. Oh yeah, there. There yeah. we go. Darks here has uh, got an Agonims. I don't think we ever see this. Uh. Yeah, Aghanim's just really strong, but a lot of what NSUF are at the moment is behind their castings. Like, Alchemist isn't really hitting hard or anything because he's building into pipe and he's got a mech. It's only really their Doom that's got any right click damage, so. Yeah, that's a good point. Regeneration. <sighs> yeah. What I quite like to see on a dark here is uh, something like a blink, because it allows you yeah. to jump to the middle of them in vacuum. I was about yeah. to say, I think a blink or a four staff would probably have been the more preferred choice. In fact, you could get both for the price of an Agonim, so more utility. But it can't hurt, it is more damage. Does it reduce the cooldown? I don't know. No, it doesn't look like it. But I'm interested to see whether it makes a difference. I haven't really seen the wall being used super effectively yeah okay here we go we've got the uh, chrono being used onto the doom he's gonna have to kill it off really quickly the, uh, the uh, boy also did it does have his bkb up so the uh, first ravage is gonna do anything and neither is the second ravage right click down i'm just following his face this void he is right click go scepter being used now face void has to be a little careful there's the wall that did a fair bit of damage but the viper here with the bkb is dealing de a lot of damage with double kill dominating streak for wss da vinci and that's uh, it's three for two, so but a double ravage was used, and unfortunately it didn't lock down the faces void at all due to the BKB. And three big <laughs> players still up for WSS, and Zeus buybacks like again. There might be a possible bottom racks going now. Yeah, one racks down is all right, but the Tide Hunter is here. And the Zeus, no Zeus salty is enough or anything like that. Faces Void, running back, let's pop some out. Nah, pop. Runs back, popping mad, Master Madness. There's the slow again, but the Chrono is back up again. He's going to take down top really, really quickly. Left track, taking a full lot of Viper ulti to his face. And just killing off the Zeus before the timer ran out. And Left track's down as well. Plenty of slows, plenty of stuns. Surge being used onto the Faces Void. And this Titan is just going to take a. He's really tanky, but it's not going to be any, any good for him. Stun onto two. Doom popping his BKB and Doom onto the Viper, which is really good. He is hit really hard. Viper goes down, but the Doom Doom getting knocked down so quickly here by the Faces Void with all the bashes. He's really tanky. Is it enough? So many bashes. And I don't think the Alchemist could take on this Faces Void. Level 22 against level 14. The stun is going to come out. He's going to keep going. But here comes the, uh, the Sand King. And with lots of bashes, is the Alchemist going to make it? No, I don't think he will. Unfortunately, he no. does buy back. Gonna take a second crack, but there's no BKB. There's no BKB for either of them. And a stun by There is there is a chrono up in three seconds though. Yes, it doesn't matter. To. Doom. They had to fight, they had to fight. There's gonna be a rampage. Rampage! Da Vinci. It's just owning on this face this point. They keep going in. Here comes the uh Epi Center onto the left track, who was also shackled up, so that's a secured kill. They still and there is GG called. Well, I don't really know what to say here, apart from don't let get faces before you get fat. He's now got nearly 6k gold, and that's an SUF going down. And WSS is definitely playing the better game here. I don't know why it was like what it was due to, but I think they had some really good hero picks as well. Yeah, I, I did really like the way they were laning things. So the darks here can really shut down like they're doing, slowing his farm down. Yeah. Without making him rely on things like Devour. So although Zeus and Tide Hunter, you know, with their big combos, dealing a lot of damage, once the, uh, the we had a we had an early mech, we had an early pipe, a lot of that damage is negated. So, it's, yeah, it's just not enough to uh, secure 
a nice early victory, which I think is what they were possibly going to try and go for. Like you said, the Doom was shut down by Dark Sea as well, and the Faces Void just played really well. Some of those Chronospheres were really good, and the Agonims pick up a very good choice as well. As as the Chronospheres were working for him, why not get the cooldown nice and lower? Yeah, I I've, I've, I've never really seen an Agonims Void work so effectively, because obviously it slows down you're hitting hard, your attack speed, but having it up every 60 seconds is... it can just halt an entire fight. Yeah, so that was 13, 39 minutes, uh, 38.25 to WSS, why so serious, against NSUF. This is game one, game two will be coming up shortly, and if you're watching it on YouTube, then it will be somewhere around on my channel. Um, so stay tuned for game two.